Uh, Tuesday, 31st of January at 6.37 p.m. So the reason why I'm doing this video, uh, I was just praying, uh, you know, God please help me. Um, because uh, what actually happened was, um, well, lots of things have been happening. <laughs> but what actually happened was I just fed the animals. Um, so here they are eating. They've munged it out. There's little Zena and Alvin eating. So in there I had the kiblets, kiblets, free range chicken mince, grated carrot, and egg. Uh, and before I used to put hemp oil in as well, but I've run out of hemp oil. Now, the situation is with that, um, I've run out of eggs. I still have um, some, I still have um, carrot. And I've got enough kiblet. I've got enough kiblet in here. You can see uh, the bag in there. Probably not. There's a bag in there. There's enough kiblets in there for, because um, I feed the cat the kiblets as well. And now there's enough kiblets in there for the next, probably another four days. No more eggies. Um, and there's enough mince definitely. So I've got enough food for about three. I'm just dealing with it, um, the retic. Just watering my garden. See, that's the solenoid, even though I've turned it off. It's still going because um, the solenoid doesn't turn off. So I actually have to turn it off at the tap to let it run to the next station. Uh, that's all right. It's not the end of the world. There's only two solenoids that do that. Uh, so with the animal food, um, I have enough food for the next uh, for maximum four days. Okay, maximum four days. Um, and then after that, I don't know how I'm going to feed them. And just so you know, I've got no money for ten days. All right, so I've got six days where I don't know how I'm going to feed the animals. And I took a, um, I took a. Um, I took a um, voucher, I got a food and petrol voucher last week. You can only get one, you can only get three a year and one every month. So I have to wait a month before I go for the next one. Uh, and then, um, and as you know, I've borrowed money to buy some plaster. So I could keep going with the plastering last week or the two weeks before that. Last time I had ran out of money four days before. Now this is like ten days before. So I'm going backwards, you see, because every time I... It's fucking scary, shit, eh? So this time it's ten days, ten days with no money. Um, but the last time when I ran out of um, money... I had no money for four days. I actually still had um, animal food. You see? Like I had enough. That bag of kiblets was full and I had some eggs. I just, even if all I could give them was carrot, egg and kiblets, that, that was enough. But I like to give them chicken frames and I went to the butchers and got them some bones today as well. So, and that would last for a few days. Still, um, says number five's come on. Oh, yeah, it's come on. It's just number five's three tick. So, I went to God straight away and I was going to show the process. I had a counseling session today um, when I fed them, and I just realized how little kiblet was left. This fucking insane anxiety attack kicked in. I thought, do I have to surrender the animals? Like, do I have to actually surrender them to the... Because <laughs> oh. what do you do if you can't feed animals? What do you do? You have to let them go. <laughs> <laughs> So basically what I did was I um I um prayed to God straight away because there's a few things that happened today. I had my 
I had the counselling, um, I had an appointment with the job provider today. And that, was, that proved really fruitful. That was fantastic because the lady says there, you know, how are you going uh, with work? I said, look, I seriously can get a job in a second. <laughs> I've got the skill set to get a job in a second. But I've had too many counsellors, friends, and this job provider in the past saying, just take this time to heal and because I keep... You know, collapsing in grief and various things like that and she says yeah no the job provider goes yeah no you really need this time to heal she has no worries so um is there anything that i can do to assist you and she goes like and i said well you know there's this and this and this um and then she says uh i've got some um courses that i can offer you that are paid for that can I thought, yeah, look, let's do that because I was enrolled at TAFE uh, on, on, in an online course for mental health diploma and it's a pretty arduous course and uh, my library's not set up to study at home so I was going to the to the library and no, no fault of the, 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 um, the facility, the, the teacher, but it was an online course but she offered... Um, um, Monday she'd be there 9 to 11 but she was a real chatter, she liked to chat you see and so I would turn up and I was, you know, this was when, in winter so when my husband had left me and, and I just was trying to get my brain to a cognitive space you see and um, and she's very skilled at lots of things and it sort of became like a counselling session but what I really needed was to I've got coconut oil in my head, I can't put coconut on the got split ends, major split ends, I really need a haircut. So I've got my hair covered in coconut oil to try and make it healthy. She uh, was great. Sorry about that. You fell off the ladder. Yeah, fell off the ladder. <laughs> I just thought I better not, um, I better not um, put oil on the wall. I was just going to show something I learned with the therapist today, but I'll get back to there in a second. So basically, when I was doing TAFE last, um, uh, uh, J July and August and September July, August June, July, August, September and October it was online, I was going to the TAFE and I wasn't really getting anywhere very fast because I'd turn up at the TAFE to use their resources and the lecturer was like chit 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 chat 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 and a lot of it was really good and it was really helping me out but at the same time I just wanted to get ahead of the study and I just wanted to, but I, and I wasn't feeling it I was getting ahead of the study and I couldn't study at home, and then I just ended up going, no, nah, no, nah. it's just not working. So when this lady, and I will go back to finish that mental health diploma because it's a really amazing course, and it ties in with my uni degree. So I'll do the finish the diploma at TAFE, um, and then eventually I'll go back and finish my online, uh, my uni counselling and writing degree, which I'm halfway through because. Basically, it's all online now anyway. So as soon as the library's set up and I've got my office set up and the computer set up, boom, 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 I'll just, I'll just power along with my study. Like, I'm, I'm doing, getting high distinctions at uni. I'm, I'm a really good student. But it's about getting my head in the right zone, you see. And, um, um, yeah, so when this job provider, Nicole, offered me this, uh, all these different courses that she said that the job provider paid for, um, and they've got these facilities there, like computers and internet and everything there. And there's a, I thought, oh, that area up there by the window, I could go there. And it's walking distance from my house, whereas the Northern Tafe is not actually walking distance. It's probably about a 45, 50 minute walk, like an hour walk that way. And in summer, I think it'll be too much. And in winter, it'll be too much. But the job provider agency is only 20 minutes down the road. So I can get there even if I don't have much petrol, right? And, um, and, and and everything's paid for, like the printing, and and I can just sit there. And it's got a nice view. It actually overlooks the. It's actually a really nice job provider agency, and it's in an old building. And the people there, I've never met such kind job providers before. So, yep, I took it on, and I'm doing community services, and I like it because half the units I've already done with my aged care, so I've got the you other know, recognition, you know, RPLs, recognition of prior learning. 
but I don't mind redoing the units again, getting my brain back into study mode, relearning what I already know, really mastering it. And there's a couple of units in there that I haven't done before, which is fantastic, which are trauma informed, drug and alcohol informed, and obviously top, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island before uh, uh, informed. And what that actually does, this particular community service, Cert 3, it actually expands my skill set from being a support worker to being a community support worker. Like, so I can do allied health support out in the community. Um, and I'm happy to do that. I'm happy. I don't want to be stuck indoors in front of a computer. Like I like to be out, I like to be active with people. So, and what I said to Nicole was, that's actually a job I can do even with grief. Like if I'm taking a client out on, a, on an activity support and I'm, I'm doing something physical with them, I can actually keep my grief at bay. But at uh, certain jobs, I just would not be able to keep my grief at bay. Like, it would just be too much. So she was aware of that. She's excited and happy that I was prepared to take it on. I said, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about that. That's a, that, that. That to me feels like a really fundamental move forward. And I told her about my YouTube channel and that hopefully it's going to become monetized pretty soon. Um, uh, probably a fair way off actually. I think I don't know how many numbers I need to get monetized, but I think it's probably at least 500, I would say. And um, and then my son said to me, my son who's in Australia, he said to me, Mum, even when you do get, uh, I just got to crack my arm, even when you do get, oh, she says, even when you do get monetized, Mum, it's not going to be very much money. And he says, and by the way, also, he says, when they, when you do get monetized, then they filter your content. So that's when they control you. So you might get paid for your YouTube channel, but then you also get controlled. And that's when I'll have to go to Rumble or something. Anyways, the point of this video, why I decided to set it off, was because that breakdown of realizing that I might have to surrender my animals because I can't feed them. I thought, I can't bear the idea of having to go out and ask for people to help me out again, money, like... So it comes down to money, doesn't it, right? So that bag of kibbutz, $51. So, you know, like I'm sure there's someone out there that would be prepared to lend me 50 bucks to, for, for me to keep my animals, but I'm getting tired of having to ask for financial help to stay alive. Like it's been six weeks now, or four weeks, or right, every fortnight um, I've had to b borrow to get through that fortnight. Four, four, five, four. Yeah, the last month. Okay, so the last month I've had to borrow money five times, or well, three or five times. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just, just. But also, I don't want to let go of my animals. But the, the therapist told me today. So with this, um, with my nervous, to help my nervous. Uh, uh, so, uh she gave me a long word again. And I, I was learning that. I can't wait to write all this down. I'm really good when I write things down, and I do, that's when I remember it. When I hear it, I'm, I really have to write things down to remember them. But basically, the symp sympathetic nervous, the sympathetic nervous system. Basically, she says you've got a lifetime of trauma to de-escalate, to, to 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 get out. So when all of that stuff takes over, yeah, let the body cry, let the body collapse if it has to, because that's a coping mechanism. And yes, it is important. However, however, to really get through it, it goes straight to knowing that God, Jesus is with me. And she says, so if, like, so this hand here goes around here. So it's like patting here and there's a lymph gland in there and it really impacts the nervous system. It's all like electromagnetic fields. It's like EFT, electronic frequency technique. So basically by tapping that, I'm disrupting the nervous system um, I'm disrupting a nervous system message, okay? So if I'm in extreme flight, fight, fright, fawn state, which is what trauma does, um, I, I can actually change that um, communication to my brain by doing this. And I, and I immediately let my body re-regulate itself. And the other one is here. So I'm either doing, so I put my hand here, I hold that one still, like it's right around. I hold that tight and I, Pat here, like, and imagine being embraced by a loving parent, you know, like God, Jesus. Or I can pat both of them at the same time. 
So that's what I was doing when I had my absolute freak out before. I feel like I had to surrender my animals because the truth of the matter is I've still got food for four days. I don't need to stress about that now. We do not know what four days is going to hold, do we? We don't know what miracles could occur within four days. And, you know, God might give me the perfect message of maybe who to reach out to, you know? Who to maybe ask? I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not sure what the solution is to be able to feed my animals. Um, yeah, my next pay get, is on the 10th of February. And, um, um, look, I can do things like I can go to local, local stock and feed place and just tell them my situation, tell them I have to surrender my dogs if I, could they give me a loan for 10 days? Like, it's a big request. It's a big request to ask a business to give me a loan of $50 for 10 days, but, or could I set up a credit account? I could ask, could I set up an account? Um, and I'll show, I can take my bank statements um, and just let them know my situation and say, if I can't pay <laughs> my dog. Little Zena. Like, if I can't feed my dogs, I'm just gonna have to adopt them out. <laughs> She's been jumping in the pool. I've got a pond out the back. Um, I've got a pond, a, a water pond out the back. And, uh, uh, the reason why I haven't taken them to the river today is because I'm going to take them first thing in the morning. I had all these appointments today and because I had the, the job provider appointment first thing in the morning and then I, um, oh, that went on for ages because she was enrolling me in this course and there was all this, uh, she was looking after other clients before she, she had me and then she was looking after other clients because she said, I can get this order and you can come back later. I said, no, I'll just wait here. And I did some other stuff while I was there, like emails and various things. And then, and then what happened was I then had my counselling session at the church, uh, and that was fantastic. And I thought that I had two with her because I knew she was one hundred and fifty dollars, and the church had uh, allocated three hundred towards my counselling. But she said, no, 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 we we actually charged the church a hundred, um, and so that means you got one more session. But if you can pay fifty dollars to the next session, that means you got two more sessions. So I said, well. Yeah, great. So the next session is in two weeks. So I'll just allocate fifty dollars towards that next session, and then I've got one more with her. That's four, and then we'll see what the future holds, right? Uh, but at least, but what I'm learning from this, because she's trauma informed, she's Christian, she's really good with family of origin uh, dysfunction, and she, she's actually really amazing when it comes down to trauma. Like I've shared with her so much about my history, and her response to it is one that I haven't had from a trained professional before and that's why I know she's really uh, she really gets the depth of well she's trauma informed right she, she's a trauma informed therapist so that's exactly what I needed um and she just fully believes like I do that the that the journey is a uh, is you know that by bringing God fully into my life I'm you know well yeah we both we both she believes God way more than... I believe God, but she's had God in her life for a lot longer, okay? She's come back again. No, she's probably, she's probably like, are we going to have our walk soon? But I'm going to... Uh, she's got the... See, that's mud and water. She's, she's got a pond out the back, so she's been swimming. She's wet. And uh, yeah, I've got to get Xena microchipped and... I've got to get Alvin sterilised and, um, yeah, it's just, that I do know that animals cost money and I do know I need to get work and at the same time I feel like I should be studying first to develop my expertise a bit more to get work in the right field and then also I know no, I need to get onto this bloody room. Uh, that's what I'm doing now, so I did the... I forced myself, oh yeah, I came back from the therapy session and I was just, whoa, I was just white. And I just let myself sleep. Uh, I had a big sleep today. 
um, for about 1 to 5. Um, uh, no, about 1.30 to 5 o'clock. And then I've... Oh, no, to 3.30. Sorry, 1 to 3.30. <laughs> She's rolling on the... Here we go, I'll turn the light on so you can see. <laughs> She's rolling around. <laughs> They're okay. They're, like, they're okay. They've got a big backyard, okay? Uh, it doesn't... Oh, that's right, with the petrol. Sorry, in the car. I didn't... Oh, that's right. I didn't take him to the river today because I've been very mindful of my petrol. And I did um, put half build the car up with petrol. So, you know, I've only got a few trips in there. So I, I take him to the river every second day. And they got the yard. You know, they've got a really big backyard. They've got toys. Um... And, you know, they've had me here most of the day and they've got a good feed. And so, yeah, I've got the, the second coat of paint. I got out up from my, um, what do you call it, my rest today and I didn't want to get up. I was like, I, I felt depressed, actually. I think I felt depressed. I think I felt depressed. I'm pretty sure I was depressed. Uh, I just didn't want to get up and I went no nah, you've got to get up Nadine you've just got to get up you've got to keep working on this house come on so it's now seven o'clock I've got the second coat on here and because I've used this um, paint that I got from a, a, uh, a garage sale uh, it was actually old and down the bottom was all the white the, the thick sort of plastic stuff and the tint was all up the top. So when I mixed it up, all down the bottom was the coagulated white paint. And unfortunately, when I paint, it, it keeps leaving blobs of, um, you know, blobs of, uh, doesn't matter how much I squish it, it's leaving blobs on there. So it's far from a perfect paint job. So what I'm going to have to do is sand this back when it's dry. I'm going to have to sand it back really lightly. Take the, take the, like, squished most of the blobs out but you can see I squished this blob out and then I've had to, I painted over with a brush so what I need to do is sand it back and when I put the third coat on I'm going to squish the paint through see so see this thing here see that blob there it's like but some of them are bigger than that so basically yeah there's these blobs of paint in there so what I've got to do is sand that out and when I do the next coat, see that I have to get those blobs out which means it's gone back to the plaster. I'm going to sand that back and when I do the next coat I'm actually going to put the paint through a strainer. <laughs> so this wall has been a mission, right? This is, my, this is another resilience job. <laughs> but that's partially to do with what I was learning about the plastering and the sanding and I was using old paint. So. It's just a process of de de determination. And then, you know, back to this library, which is what I'm about to do now. Seriously, I am about to um, sand this plaster down. Sand this plaster down. You know, can you see the roughness? It's not gonna be hard. Sand the plaster down, paint it. I've got this green paint. Unfortunately, my cornice paint, you're not gonna believe it, but my beautiful cornice paint, I had a heap of it in a tin, enough to finish this room, and it's bloody dried on me. I'll show you. It is so distressing. So this is the tin. This is the tin in my corners paint, and look what's happened. Look what's bloody happened to my paint. Bloody hell, man. There was enough paint in there to finish the cornices. So I was going to do that yesterday, and I realised I can't. I just realised, oh my goodness me, I actually can't. That really upset me. I went, okay, so be it. Now I've got to buy more paint before I can do the cornices. So be it. So be it. So be it. You know, life is life. You know, like, oh, anyways, loves. I'll just leave it at that for the moment and I might do a, a video later. But I wanted to show you that process of what I learnt today. Okay. Love you all. Keep well. Bye. God bless.